Okay, and we're live. So, hi everyone, and welcome to our second instalment of the AI series. Um, my name's Laura, and I am the marketing executive for Oxygen Digital. We specialize in building AI and data science teams currently in the Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, and the US. And we put together the AI series, which is um, made up of expert panel sessions and keynote speeches. And we've created this to kind of promote knowledge sharing um, and really connect our network across all bases in all different countries. Um, so Livestorm may be new for quite a few of you, so I'll just give you a little overview. If you look at the panel on the right hand side, you'll see a chat option. Here you can contact um, anyone in the chat. So that'll be myself or Hajar as well. And if you have any problems, just pop it in there and I'll get back to you and hopefully we can sort those out. We also have the questions tab. So if you do have any questions to ask, please pop them in there and then we'll get round to them in our Q&A section. Um, if you do see a question that you want answered, if you click upvote, that then puts that to the top of our priority list. So we'll get to that one sooner. If you see anything in the polls section or we talk about a poll, please click on the little polls tab and you will be able to vote on there um, and we can kind of reference that as well. But what I'll do for now is hand over to Hajar, um, just to let you know as well that after this event, um, you will get a live recording of the event and we'll also have a YouTube version available with closed captions or subtitles within the next following days. So you can have a look at that as well. So yeah, I'll pass you over now and I'll be quiet. But if you do need anything, please reach out to me in the chat. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you everyone for attending our session. I'm gonna share my screen in a second. Okay, so thank you very, very much for uh, the introduction, Laura. So for today's session, we're going to talk about MLOps and how it can be seen as an accelerated path toward delivering um, business value. So who am I? I'm Hajar. I'm an artificial intelligence and data consultant at Deloitte Luxembourg. I've been the 2021 Women in Data Science uh, Luxembourg Regional Lead this year, and I've been volunteering for science and technology for the IEEE for over five years now, and I held multiple positions within the organization, such as the Vice Chair of the IEEE Young Professionals Morocco. So um, until recently, we heard a lot about machine learning operations many times at big conferences or mentions in research papers or just whenever we talk about uh, moving to the cloud, scaling, creating and mentoring machine learning um, pipelines, dealing with sensitive data at scale and many other problems. So in this session, we are going to focus more specifically on the elements that add to machine learning operations to drive the effectiveness and the performance for today's businesses. So um, before doing that, I would just like to highlight the state of three major fields today uh, that led to um, the development of uh, machine learning operations, which are software engineering, um, DevOps, and machine learning. So as of machine uh, software engineering on and how we write software, we have seen uh, many, uh, many developments and evolutions through the years, moving from simpler and basic stuff, like moving from punch cards, and then we see um, multi-user Unix systems, and then we had personal computers and network computers through the years to emailing patch files, etc. And all these have um, have seen um, an evolution until we have today a distributed version control um, uh, tools like Git and GitHub. On the other hand, we also had DevOps on how we, de we deploy software. So eventually, we also had um, developments and evolution through the years, like from editing code live on the server to building binaries and emailing them around to continuous integration, continuous deployment as it came with the develop DevOps um, uh, philosophy to public cloud to the immutable infrastructure we are having today, like cover, uh, Docker, Kubernetes, and GitOps. And last but not least, we have also seen multiple um, uh, things happening in the field of machine learning or AI on how we use the data plus the mathematics to train the models, 
Uh, in the beginning, we had um, very simpler uh, algorithms like linear regressions or just like curve fittings. And then with the math, we have seen Markov chains to more um, advanced neural networks with all the statistical functions. Then came our first AI winter where we rediscovered the backpropagation algorithms and moved into a whole data-driven approach with a bunch of algorithms that, that are advanced and that um, helped the grow and um, develop more and more um, of the field, such as deep learning today, which became uh, computationally feasible with all the developments in the hardware um, area as well. So as these three fields uh, come together and as machine learning emerges from research, these disciplines need to converge. And the convergence of software engineering, DevOps, and machine learning was eventually called machine learning operations. And to give a simple uh, definition of machine learning operations before moving forward, machine learning operations has been seen as a set of practices for collaboration and communication between two, two people, basically. Data scientists on, uh, on one hand, and on the other hand, operational, operations professionals. And applying the techniques of machine learning operations uh, helped actually to increase quality, simplify the management of uh, the processes, and automate and de the deployment of machine learning at scale. This has not only led uh, to align models with the business needs, but more specifically to um, uh, align with the regulatory requirements as well, which are also a um, major uh, player in the, in the field today. Like They are regulating mostly everything and leading projects. So um, yeah, here we can see that AI has been actually um, very uh, uh, popular and gaining lots of potential to reinvent the global economy. As we see here in this slide, we have over like 274 uh, billion USD dollars that are estimated to be the global data and analytics markets by 2022. So the potential of AI is significantly growing over the years. But although we have these kind of numbers, on the other hand, we also have seen uh, kind of situation that was developing over the years. So growing AI investments, yes, but only few projects were deployed at scale. And here in a survey of 3,073 AI-aware C-level executives, only 20% of them have mentioned that AI was in production. Meanwhile, the, the rest, 80%, was developing, experimenting, and contemplating. So there's a big gap between um, um, machine learning and AI in the development phase today and what is being actually deployed into production. And on the other hand, we have um, out of 160 reviewed AI use cases, 88% uh, did not progress beyond the experimental stage. So it has been always uh, this kind of statistics be it from 2017, 2018, but it started improving uh, over the years with the adoption of the different MLOps practices. Uh, here we also have an interesting statistic that successful early AI adopters reported profit margins that increased until 15% higher than industry average. So the potential of AI is there, but we are, lack we are lacking how um, to get the most out of it. So regarding the machine learning development and deployment cycle, many teams have problems they don't realize exist. So bulk of efforts today in the left side of the process, which are developments, testing, and release, are mainly focused into um, the democratization of data science and having all those tools and libraries and auto machine learning uh, techniques. However, the operational side on the, on the right is still lacking. So there's definitely a gap. But what makes machine learning uniquely challenging into production? We have uh, several set of reasons, and we're going to highlight those through this talk. Starting with the first one, which is mainly dataset dependency, we have mentioned three here. So there are uh, there is, on the first hand, the 
famous black box of machine learning, uh, which takes lots of inputs, be it algorithmic, human data set to provide input. But there is also the lack of reproducibility and having correct results as input. Uh, data changes over time. The data is significantly changing. So there is always um, a difficulty to have the same results over and over again. And because live data is different than to training data, machine learning in production usually tends to behave differently than in the developer sandbox we have seen um, previously. Then moving on to part two, which was simple to complex practical topologies, uh, we have seen some issues as multiple loosely coupled pipelines running possibly in parallel with dependencies on human, the future engineering, uh, must match for training and inference as well, control pipelines, A-B testing, complexity with uh, the different techniques of ensembling or federated learning, etc. So as much as it goes to more complex uh, topologies, uh, machine learning deployment in production becomes more and more um, difficult. Part three, heterogeneity and scale. So today we are having lots of engines, lots of tools, lots of interesting technologies out there that are being born, um, I would say, even month after another. And we have possibly diff differing engines like Spark, TensorFlow, Cafe, PyTorch, etc. And on the other hand, many different languages like Python, Java, Scala, and R. And all these are being used and it's significantly heterogeneous. So we are noticing issues in inference versus training engines, like training can sometimes can be frequently batch, inference can be REST endpoints, uh, custom code, etc. future manipulation as well. So each of the engines mentioned previously comes with a set of futures and opportunities, but also have um, many issues that have to deal with and integrating all this is not easy for um, in, in, in production. Then there's another part which is also important, and we don't usually talk about this part, although it leads um, most of our um, initiatives and projects today. It's compliance and regulation part. And through the years, there has been efforts uh, for the regulation and the compliance, and we have especially in the financial services, be it banks, insurances, etc. It was really important to have some kind of um, risk management models or regulations to in order to protect the financial institutions or for example we have also the gdpr on reproducing and explaining machine learning decisions and until recently we have been um delighted to see uh, an initiative of the european ai act that was uh trying to uh have um more regulatory, um, I would say, context for AI and limiting the, the, the use of more high risk applications. So these were um, major parts in uh, prob and problems for that are challenging machine learning into production today. Another part was collaboration and process. So for the collaboration part, the expertise mismatch between data science and operations definitely complicates uh, the integration and the management of the applications we're developing today. So there's there's not really um, a big collaboration or a, a suitable um, way to approach it. And there's also problems in the process. So many objects to be tracked and managed. We have many algorithms, many models in the pipelines, many versions of the code, etc. Machine learning pipelines are code, so some approach them as code, some not. Depends how people see them. But also some machine learning models, uh, objects, are not best handled in source control repositories. So all these come together to um, be uniquely challenging for machine learning into production. But interestingly, all these problems have been seen before and especially in the 90s, software engineering was, was siloed and not everything was version controlled there. And there was no continuous de delivery in software engineering. And it, like in some projects, it took months to ship the software, but now it, it's being shipped only in minutes. Today, the aim is to have the same for AI and it is possible to have the same capabilities and progress that 
um, have seen uh, for the software engineering through the years, we can also overcome the issues and challenges that we're having today um, for uh, machine learning into production. And here we have uh, automating the production machine learning um, life cycle. So it all starts with uh, five main pillars for the machine learning um, life cycle. We have continuous integration deployment, machine learning orchestration, machine learning health, business impact, and model governance. And through all this, there's a continuous collaboration uh, cycle going on between the different stages and different areas. So the business value here that we see on the right is only achieved when we have um, when we have uh, invested effort in these five pillars of machine learning, be it the governance uh, from a perspective of regulation, et cetera, and roles, uh, be it machine learning health and metrics, et cetera, if we're all is tested in continuous integration, for example. So all these should come together in order to achieve the business value we're seeing today and we're aiming for. So machine learning uh, operations, development operations, and software development lifecycle. So when we do integrate um, machine learning with um, software development lifecycle, for example, with source control repositories, et cetera, for code, and when we integrate with DevOps for automation, scale, and collaboration, those can uh, be the first steps in order to effectively deploy machine learning into production. So how it works? We have uh, data coming from data streams and data lakes, and there is a exchange of data between the different um, analytic engines. Uh, we have our models, uh, be it with TensorFlow, PyTorch, et cetera, that are on the other hand, exchanging uh, events and alerts with agents. And here we can be wondering what are agents. Agents are third layer um, within the model architecture uh, that monitor and collect metrics from the channel uh, machine learning channel. And then we have an exchange here with the server, which is eventually connected with data science platforms. Today, we have many of those that are famous, like Data Robot, uh, H2O, Cloudera, Dataiku, etc. So those are not um, all of the ones existing today, but some of the most famous ones. And we have uh, continuous control and statistics over the performance that gets passed back mm, to drive analytics on model service uh, health, I would say accuracy and data drift as well. So all these is monitored in order uh, to um, continuously improve the, the performance and accuracy. So what are the requirements today to achieve machine learning operations? There are, we can conclude them in four um, requirements. First one is reproducibility, uh, must be able to retrain a nine month old uh, model within a few um, hours, etc. The second one is accountability, must be able to trace back from model in production to its provenance. Third one, uh, collaborative, must be able to do asynchronous collaboration. And the fourth one is uh, continuous, it must be able to deploy automatically and monitor statistically. Four major pillars for uh, and requirements for machine learning operations that are being seen um, by the experts that they count in order to make an improvement in the models we have today, like the way we manage them actually, not um, more specifically. So machine, um, data engineering and machine learning are different from software development, but how? So there are unique ways uh, that working with data codes and models are different, and this makes the existing software tools insufficient. This we'll see in the next slide. So by tracking the runs, you can achieve MLOps. Normal software development usually always focuses on the codes and the commits of codes, but when it comes to machine learning, for us, it's not only about code, it's also about the data, the metrics, and the models. So three parts for machine learning that needs to be uh, monitored and tracked. So we need to track runs, bundling data and code and parameter versions that went into creating intermediate data sets or models so, so that we can provide full context, as we see here, for reproducibility, provenance to connect the data, engineering with model training, and to track back for accountability. And this is what mainly separates uh, 
uh, just the simple DevOps from MLOps. So the machine learning operations model lifecycle. We have the data engineering part. So in the data engineering pipelines, we need to track data runs as we discussed, as raw data has been processed and future features are being engineered. Samples are annotated with labels. Every data version needs also to be recorded and made available for model deployment. Um, here we have three major parts. We have the data engineering part, the deployment part, and the production part as well. Moving to the data deployment part, once the data is annotated and ready to start building models, we need to track the runs. So we can increase the team productivity by building runnable machine learning knowledge base to eliminate silos. And this needs to uh, reduce, this is needed mainly to reduce the need of one person. So whenever um, one person leaves, there's no more dependencies. There there's always a possibility for another person to come and pick it up where it's left. So the risk of one key person is eliminated with this uh, technique. Then we have models into production. Uh, we need to be able to push our models to production through a continuous integration, continuous deployment system. And once our models are there, we need to keep them performing reliably. So there's always a trade-off of the accuracy uh, that gets uh, compromised, but we need alerting systems on issues with statistical monitoring, etc., to be confident that our models are always performing and the issues are being solved um, in a timely manner. So to, to sum up uh, what has been seen for the moment, we have seen that um, we are at the beginning of machine learning opera operationalization. And much like databases, we need uh, collaboration between data, database uh, administrators, software engineers, and machine learning engineers as well in order to come up with um, techniques and the process and best practices that would help us overcome the issue of deployment of models today into production. And here I've mentioned a resource uh, for machine learning operations in order to uh, see more details and more of more history or techniques about the practices. And for the resources used uh, for this presentation, there are so many uh, so many resources that are being taken from uh, Deloitte internal um, materials that are uh, publicly available uh, to uh, through the internet. There are also some um, presentations that uh, and work has that has been done by the machine learning uh, experts and Mac McKinsey etc. Uh, as being the leaders in the industry today. But uh, that has been the presentation for today. I would like to thank you very much for listening. And I would like to move right now to the um, questions section. If you have any questions or you would like to get in touch, these are my contacts. And I would love to hear from you soon. Hey guys, so if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them either in the chat or in the questions tab. It's completely up to you. Um, but make use of your time. We've got Hajar here to answer your questions. So please feel free to ask away. So we have a question coming from Hamza Lebar. Thank you very much, Hamza, for your question. Um, so the question is, what are the missing pieces for people with expertise in DevOps and machine learning to master MLOps? So um, to make sure I understood well your question, um, you're asking like why people who already master machine learning and DevOps are not being able to uh, be fully um, MLOps experts, is that your question, Hamza? Could you please confirm in the chat? Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, um, as as we have been, as we have seen, machine learning operations is um, is not only um, a recent field, but it has be became uh, one of the must uh, or 
must have or hot topics that are today. And there are not only a few steps into it, there are definitely definitely many parts to it. There are parts related to talent, parts related to tools, how we how we um, deal with our data, how we deal with our models. Uh, and it's, it's an ongoing research. Maybe today we have uh, experts in DevOps and we, as we have seen, DevOps is different from machine learning operations since we no longer care about code only, but it's code models and metrics, code data and metrics, sorry. And so, yeah, it's a combination of things. We, maybe we're not there yet today, but um, as the results and statistics have been, uh, has shown, we have significantly doing uh, some progress there today. So I would say, the missing pieces are just like a matter of mastering uh, the whole ecosystem of MLOps and definitely also the, the awareness of MLOps. Not everyone is applying MLOps today, but we will be there soon, hopefully. We also have a question come through on the questions tab yes. as well from Steve. Uh, Steve has said, have you conducted M any MLOps at a client during your work? If so, what were the main challenges? So yes, uh, mainly um, in my work as a consultant, in any uh, project that is AI related, uh, there, there's always um, a list of things and requirements that come up front. And being... Um, being compliant with those requirements is definitely um, a major player into the success of the projects. And MLOps is one of them. Um, whenever there is a client that comes for an implementation, it's always um, important to tell them how we are being able to um, handle their, um, I mean, the performance in production because it's it's eventually what matters. In my personal experience, yes, I've had um, MLOps assignments as not really MLOps assignments, but we applied MLOps as part of the techniques. Uh, but the main challenges are, as I said, um, maybe not in my Korean job, but in previous experiences, mostly um, not, not all clients are aware of the importance of um, the techniques, uh, not all. I would say maybe even uh, sometimes it's hard to um, see it uh, within the team. So it, different, it, it, it depends on the philosophy of the company. But today, as where I am in Deloitte, we definitely take that into consideration. And it, the main challenges as, are being overcome with time. So it's always a trial and error kind of philosophy. Okay, I can't see anyone type in. So if you do have any further questions, you can contact myself. Um, I'll just pop my email address in here. And you can also contact Hajar as well. Definitely. Um, all of her details, um, I can't multitask. <laughs> um, all of her details will be on the um, email that will come out very shortly also with a live recording of this video as well and as mentioned we'll have the youtube um, version of this up shortly along with all of the references but if you do have any further questions or you'd like to be involved in a future um future event with the ai series be that a panel session or a future talk please let me know and also, if you are looking for a career or a career change in AI and data science, please take a look at Oxygen Digital's um, website or again, contact me to see what we've got available. Or even if you're looking to build your teams, then please let me know as well. But we'll go ahead and we'll wrap that one up. So thank you very much, Hajar. Um, and thank you everyone for attending. And I hope to see you again in the future at our future events. Thank you very much. It was great having seen you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have bye a bye. nice day. Bye-bye.